When you need an answer to a question, chances are you look it up on the Internet. However, a new Columbia University study suggests that the instant results we get from search engines are affecting how we remember just about everything. What team did Babe Ruth play for in his rookie season? Which film tied All About Eve for 14 Oscar nominations? What name does artist Cat Stevens go by today? From people to places to almost anything, chances are if you need an answer, it's at your fingertips. I go to Google a lot. Google. First place I go, Google. Researchers at Columbia University are calling this the Google effect, where people immediately turn to their computers or smartphones when confronted by something they don't know. So is the internet actually dumbing us down? It, it's just like making people like lazier, I guess, or I mean like instead of just learning, I mean you just look something up and boom, you get the answer. We're more likely to remember where to find the information online than the fact itself. And I think that people have the thought that if they can go back to the internet and find the answer later, instead of really accessing what you know, that sometimes maybe you just rely on the computer as your external hard drive rather than really sort of accessing your own memory. There's a lot of information out there. You tend to forget the useless parts of it. I mean, that's cool, right? You don't want to have it clutter in your brain. The fear that technology will destroy human intellect isn't new. Over 2,500 years ago, the philosopher Socrates worried writing would weaken memories and produce forgetfulness in the souls. Doctors say it's fine to use the internet for help, but nothing will ever replace the best tool at your disposal, your brain. So I think it's important certainly to use the internet and other things for information, but that, uh, not to, that for that to be the only source of information that you have. Researchers say endless information may indeed be making us smarter, but the question is, will we remember it? Remember our trivia questions? Before he was a Yankee, the Bambino played for the Red Sox. The blockbuster Titanic also had 14 Academy Award nominations. And Yusef Islam is the former Cat Stevens. So where did we find the answers? Google, of course. Of course, and joining us now is scientist and journalist Joshua Four, winner of the 2006 USA Memory Championship and author of Moonwalking with Einstein, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything. Josh, good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? All right, so search engines like Google, Yahoo, they put information literally right at your fingertips. But how is this changing the nature of how we do remember things? Well, it seems to be the case that as we are relying more and more on these external outsourced memories that live uh, on computers, on the internet, we are coming to depend less and less on the memories that live in our own minds. So, I mean, how is it actually affecting our memory skills in the long run, though? Well, we don't know what the long-term effects of this are going to be. Um, I mean, it is clear that we are, or what the study seems to suggest, is that we are remembering less. Now, what are the long-term implications? The research is only just beginning. Yeah, let's talk about the difference between, uh, I mean, back when I was in college, if you, if you needed uh, information, you basically had to go to the library or you had to go to an encyclopedia. Um, this was really kind of just when computers were actually at the start. But I know I didn't have a laptop in college. So how are things different now with kids, like let's say when I was younger, when I had to do, go through those measures where kids now can just, you know, type in a few letters and boom, it's right there. That's right. I mean, we have the answers to any question, the entire collective knowledge of humankind uh, just, you know, a few clicks away. But you're right, this is an old story. Um, we've been, as humans, outsourcing our memories to uh, external devices probably since the first cave painting. And ever since then, there have been people who have been worried about what the effects of this outsourcing are on our internal memories. And, you know, you pointed to Socrates in that, um, in, in, in the original yeah. clip that you ran. And I think it's worth keeping in mind uh, his fear that as we rely more and more on, on information that's stored outside of ourselves, that we, our memories may suffer. Yeah, well, what about the, any pros that, that you can see? It's, I mean, I know some of the cons, we talk about this, maybe the kind of the dumbing down of America, but what are some of the pros? Well, I mean, I, I, like any techno technological shift of this magnitude, there are going to be pluses and minuses. And the benefits are obvious. I mean, we all benefit from having uh, Google and the incredible wealth of information that's there at our fingertips. Yeah. The costs are probably harder to calculate, and I think we're just beginning to attune ourselves yeah. to what those costs may be. And I think it's worth paying attention uh, without necessarily becoming Luddites, without shutting ourselves off, to at least be aware of how this is affecting us and how we might be able 
to mitigate those effects. All right, you want a competition for your great memory skills. Do you have any tips for people on how they can remember all the information that they're able to take in so quickly on computers now? Very often when people uh, forget, it's because they simply weren't paying attention. Their attention was divided. Samuel Johnson said the art of remembering is the art of paying attention. So if I had one simple tip, it's just to take a moment to say, you know what? I want to remember this. And yeah. simply by doing that, you know, you're more likely to pay attention and that piece of information is less likely to slip your mind. All right, Josh, thanks. Well, what's your last name again? I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, just <laughs> Four, kidding. I like the number, all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, Josh, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Good to talk to you Thank this morning. Thank you.